Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the deal. This is the Book of Enoch, chapter 26. And here we go. And I went from thence to the middle of the earth. Now, I don't know. This uh, just a little background here. Sounds a little bit like Lord of the Rings-ish kind of, you know, Middle Earth and all this. I don't know. Um, one thing I do know is hell is beneath. So is there a hollow spot in the earth underneath? I, I don't know. But the Bible does teach, and I mentioned it in the previous study, Enoch 20 through 25 that uh, yeah in Enoch 20 through 25 chapters that um, there was a place in hell a non-smoking section called Abraham's bosom which prior to Jesus all the Old Testament saints went to this compartment in hell non-tormented awaiting for the Messiah to arrive. And you can read about that in the book of Job. The book of Job is probably the oldest book in the Bible. Um, I, I There was a scholar that said that, and I was kind of like, eh, maybe, I don't know. I, I was kind of considering perhaps Genesis was, but uh, after showed me some things i do believe that job is the oldest book of the bible written before the flood the world was a very very different place before the flood very different place and some people theorize that there was a canopy of water and that would filter out all the harmful radiation from the sun and if that was true, that would explain why people lived a lot longer. You know, like Methuselah lived 900 and some odd years. I mean, it was not uncommon for people to live 300 years and be healthy, you know. So how many, how many kids could uh, people have in, oh, I don't know, a few hundred years, right? And then kids have kids, and then kids have kids who have kids who have kids who have kids. So, yeah. So, Middle Earth, is this talking about Abraham's bosom? I don't know. Could be. I'm not sure. All right, so let's continue reading chapter 26, Book of Enoch. And I went from thence to the middle of the earth, and I saw a blessed place, in which there were trees with branches abiding and blooming of a dismembered tree. And, I, and there I saw a holy mountain. And underneath the mountain to the east, there was a stream and it flowed toward, towards the south. And I saw towards the east another mountain higher than this and between them a deep and narrow ravine. And it also ran a stream underneath the mountain. And to the west thereof, there was another mountain lower than the former and of small elevation and a ravine deep and dry between them. And another deep and dry ravine was at the extremities of the three mountains. And all the ravines were deep and narrow being formed of hard rock um, and trees were not planted upon them. And I marveled at the rocks and I marveled at the ravine. Yea, I marveled very much. Chapter 27. Then said I, For what object is this blessed land which is entirely filled with trees, and this accursed valley between? Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered and said, All right, so Uriel said, This accursed valley is for those who are accursed forever. Here shall all the accursed be gathered together who utter with their lips against the Lord, unseemly words, and of his glory, speak hard things. 
Here shall they be gathered together, and here shall be their place of judgment. In the last days there shall be upon them the spectacle of righteous judgment in the presence of the righteous forever. Here shall the merciful bless the Lord of glory, the eternal King. In the days of judgment over the former, they shall bless him for the mercy in accordance with which he has assigned them their lot. Then I blessed the Lord of glory and set forth his glory and lauded him gloriously. 28. And thence I went toward towards the east into the midst of the mountain range of the desert. And I saw a wilderness and it was solitary, full of trees and plants and water gushed forth from above rising like a copious watercourse which flowed toward the northwest it caused clouds and dew to ascend on every side 29 and thence i went to another place in the desert and approached to the east of this mountain range and there i saw aromatic trees exhaling the fragrance of franken frankincense and myrrh and the trees also were similar to the almond tree. Just a little note here. What did the um, wise men bring as gifts to Christ when the baby, when he, he was born? Frankincense and myrrh and gold and probably something else, but I don't remember. All right, 30. And beyond these, I went afar to the east and saw another place, a valley full of water and Therein was a tree, the color of fragrant trees, such as the mastic. And on the sides of those valleys, I saw fragrant cinnamon. And beyond these, I proceeded to the east. 31. And I saw other mountains. And amongst them were groves of trees. And there flowed forth from them nectar, which is named Sarara and Galbanium. Yeah, probably, probably slaughter those, but hey, I got an E for effort, right? And beyond these mountains, I saw another mountain to the east of the ends of the earth, whereon were aloe trees, and all the trees were full of S-T-A-C-T-E. I have no idea what that is. Being like almond trees, and when one burnt it, it smelt sweeter than any fragrant odor. All right, according to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, uh, S-T-A-C-T-E is a noun, Latin and Greek, a fatty resinous liquid matter of the nature of liquid myrrh, very odoriferous and highly valued. But it is said we have none, but what is adulterated and what is so-called is liquid storax. No idea. All right, so you got an idea of what it is. All right, 32 chapter. And after these fragrant odors, as I looked toward the north over the mountains, I saw seven mountains full of choice nard and fragrant trees and cinnamon and pepper. And thence I went over the summits of all these mountains far towards the east of the earth and passed over above the Eritrean er, C E R Y T H R A E A N C and went far from it and passed over the angel Zotiel and I came to the garden of righteousness. Garden of righteousness. And uh, let's see, I N from afar off trees more numerous than I these trees and great two trees there, very great beautiful and glorious and magnificent and the tree of knowledge the tree of knowledge hmm. whose holy fruit they eat and know great wisdom that tree is in height like the fir and its leaves are like those of the carob tree and its fruit uh, for those of you that don't know it uh, the carob tree grows in the Middle East and it is a chocolate substitute, believe it or not. It's, uh, I've eaten carob. 
it's actually pretty good. Used to make carob chocolate milk. Yeah. Uh, and its fruit is like the clusters of the vine, very beautiful, and the fragrant of the tree penetrates afar. Then I said, how beautiful is the tree and how attractive is its look? Then Raphael, the holy angel who was with me, answered me and said, This is the tree of wisdom, of which thy father, old in years, and thy aged mother, who were before thee, have eaten. And they have learned wisdom, and their eyes were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they were driven out of the garden. Eh, this is getting kind of weird, if you ask me. But then again, if this tree is the fallen angel, Lucifer, or Satan the devil, uh, the Bible says that, uh, well, let's take a look. Let's go to the Bible, Ezekiel chapter 28. You know, when Eve was in the garden talking to the serpent, and we covered that in the last uh, study. You know, everybody's saying, oh, she was talking to a snake. Uh, no, I don't think so. Ezekiel 28 and verse 12. Listen to this carefully. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom, oh, the tree of wisdom, right? Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. You know, how old was the uh, king of Tyrus if he'd been in Eden? You know, if you're talking about a earthly human king and you know you talk to probably a hundred people bible so-called scholars and probably 85 of a, 85 out of the 100 will tell you oh this is talking about a human being i don't think so thou hast been at eden the garden of god every precious stone was thy covering the sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes. Now we're talking about musical instruments here. And of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou wast born? No. In the day that thou wast created. See, this king of Tyrus was not born. He was created. So he was full of wisdom, perfect in beauty, had been in the Eden. All these precious stones were his covering. And if you look at these stones, uh, do you know the breastplate that the high priest was wearing in the temple? It had the 12 stones of the 12 tribes of Israel. I... Haven't done a big study on that, but I bet you a lot of these stones are the same. Oh, yeah. Each stone represented one of the 12 tribes. Um, in the day that thou wast created, thou art the anointed cherub. What's a cherub? It's an angel. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Covereth what? The, the mercy seat, the throne of God. That's what I think. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. When was ever a man upon the holy mountain of God? Oh, wait a minute. Weren't we talking about the, the holy mountains in the book of Enoch? Yeah, we were. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created 
till iniquity was found in thee. Hmm, what's iniquity? Sin, evil, wickedness. Satan was perfect in his ways until the, you, you know, until he decided to uh, change his job description. He, he, he was looking for a promotion, but uh, sorry that position's already filled, so sorry. You know, don't quit your job until you get that promotion, right? Uh, 16, by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Yeah, yeah, there was a war in heaven. Uh, usually when there's a war, there's violence, right? Yeah. And thou hast sinned. Yeah, he sinned, all right. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. I bet you Satan was probably, probably the most, one of the most, one of the most, if not the most beautiful of God's creations. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Do you know the word Lucifer even has reference to brightness? Oh, yeah. I will cast thee to the ground. Oh, yeah. Read Revelation 12. Satan was cast out of heaven, right? I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's go to chapter 33, Enoch. So, you know, when he was talking to the serpent in Genesis 3, she was looking at one of the, probably one of the most beautiful of God's creations. Think about it. She's not talking to a snake, you know? And we covered that in the last previous study. All right, 33, Enoch. And from thence I went to the ends of the earth and saw their great beasts, and each differed from the other, and I saw birds also differing in appearance, and beauty in voice, and one differing from the other. And to the east of those beasts I saw the ends of the earth were on the heaven rests, and the portals of the heaven open. Portals. Hmm. Where do we read about portals? Now, I don't know if there's a direct match, but in Genesis 7:11, in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows, the windows of heaven were opened. Portals, windows, I don't know. Maybe that's a stretch. I don't know. But uh, what do they talk, what, what's the secular talk about portals? Well, you got that, uh, co that, collider thing in Switzerland. Um, I forget what it's called. But uh, they're the God particle and uh, portals. Uh, I don't know. If, for example, uh, probably the most popular science fiction series in history so far was uh, Stargate. That was a portal, right? I don't know if any of you watch all that stuff, but, uh, you know, portals. So, I don't know. Portals. And the portals of the heaven open. And I saw how the stars of heaven come forth, and I counted the portals out of which they proceed and wrote down all their outlets of each individual star by itself, according to their number and their names and their course, 
courses and their positions and their times and their months. As Uriel, the holy angel who was with me, showed me, he showed me, he showed all things to me and wrote them down for me. Also their names he wrote for me and their laws and their companies. And from thence I went towards the north to the ends of the earth. And there I saw a great and glorious device at the ends of the whole earth. And here I saw three portals of heaven open in the heaven. Through each of them proceeded north winds. When they blew there is cold, hail, frost, snow, dew, and rain. And out of one portal they blow for good. But when they blow through the other two portals, it is with violence and affliction on the earth. And they blow with violence. And from thence I went towards the west to the ends of the earth. And there saw three portals of, of the heaven open, such as I had seen in the east, the same number of portals and the same number of outlets. All right, 36. And from thence I went to the south to the ends of the earth and saw there three open portals of the heaven. And thence there came dew, rain, and wind. And from thence I went to the east to the ends of the heaven and saw here the three eastern portals of heaven open and small portals above them. Through each of these small, small portals pass the stars of heaven and run their course to the west on the path which is shown to them. And as often as I saw, I blessed always the Lord of glory. And I continued to bless the Lord of glory who has wrought great and glorious wonders to show the greatness of his work to the angels and to spirits and to men that they might praise his work and all his creation, that they might see the work of his might and praise the great work of his hands and bless him forever. All right, this is the part of, uh, let's see, there's five sections to the book of Enoch, and this is the end of section one. You know, after looking at all this stuff that I've looked at for the last, oh, I don't know, last, well, 36 chapters, I, I don't see anything that really just totally disqualifies this from possibly being inspired. I, you know, when you read, especially that last sentence, that they might praise his work and all his creation, that they might see the work of his might and praise the great work of his hands and bless him forever. Does that sound like uh, a Satanist wrote this, you know, to deceive people? Of course, there is more than one book of Enoch. This is the one edited by R.H. Charles, and the one that the people that study the Bible would uh, look into. I don't know. You know, somebody asked me to take a look at this, and, you know, like I said, I haven't read this in probably at least 25 years. It's been a while. It's been a while, so... Uh, all right. Well, I guess I'm going to close this out. And uh, yeah, there's a, a lot of weird things about uh, a lot of Hollywood stuff about portals. And oh, by the way, if you'll notice, all the witches always use a circle. They're always using a circle. So, makes you wonder, since Satan can't really create anything, all he can do is corrupt things. Maybe that's the corruption of the portals. I don't know. I have no idea. One day, everything will be manifested that the Lord wants us to know. 
But, uh, you know, you got to realize something. Satan was originally created good. I mean, in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, the Lord looked at everything he had created and it, he said, it, and it was good. But all that changed in Genesis 3. You know, then you had the, uh, the liar, the deceiver, and, uh, well, the rest is uh, history, I guess you could say, which is his story, you know, Jesus. So, all right, well, I'm going to close this out, and uh, I'm going to put some, uh, as you've probably noticed, I'm putting pictures of Hollywood's depiction of portals, which wouldn't surprise me. I've heard uh, stories that Admiral Byrd went to the North Pole and found a portal leading to the Middle Earth. I don't know. I have no idea, you know, but you hear this stuff. And they cover things up, just like the giants. There's giant skeletons found all over the earth, all over the place. And for years they'd been in museums, and then all of a sudden they all get removed. You know, so what's the deal? You know, they, they're, they lie so much, and they hide things so much. You know, it, it's hard to even know what's real and what's not real. I mean, it, they're even changing the King James Bible now. I don't even know if I would trust any of the modern uh, King James Bibles. You know, people, one day it's going to be illegal to own the Bible. You know, if you ever, if you ever go to a, a bookstore, used bookstore, buy the oldest ones you can find. Uh, I've even gone to the uh, dollar store and bought dollar paperback copies of the King James, you know. Uh, that's, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, it's very important. There's going to come a day when it's not available. So, all righty. Well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.